Today's show is brought to you by Harry's. Stay tuned for a special offer coming up just for you. This is a Carl Monkhouse straight razor manufactured in Germany starting around the early 1900s. This one has seen its day. Rusty, dull, and the scales, which are the case for the razor, are in poor shape. Let's see if we can restore this and make it like new again. <laughs> There's not too much involved in disassembling this razor. There's three pins that go through the scales and hold the actual blade in place. So I'm gonna take a little grinder and grind away at the heads of these pins. See if I can free them up. Okay, I've freed up the pivot pin, which holds the blade in place. Now we gotta get the rest of these pins out. The decorative trim on the ends of the scales are in pretty good shape. You know, I don't wanna destroy them, so I'm gonna take my time and be very cautious about not ruining the trim because I'd like to reuse it. I think I need a little bit more precision, so over to the drill press with a small bit. Let's try to get these pins out. These scales are made of celluloid, which was an early plastic used for a lot of different things. But there can be a problem. The plastic can undergo a chemical reaction that basically causes the celluloid to break down. And this is called cell rot. When this happens, the celluloid emits a gas which is corrosive and will cause blades to rust. That's probably what happened to this blade. The problem is cell rot can't be stopped and it will continue to rust blades. So these old celluloid scales have to go. It's cleanup time, so that means removing some of this surface rust. We're gonna remove the rust off of the blade and also the surface rust off of the brass trim before we remove that. After a few hours in metal rescue, it's time to take a look. And yes, the surface rust is coming off of the blade, which is nice. And using a gentle brush on the brass trim, I can see the surface rust has come off of that too. This trim is in remarkably good shape considering its age and the fact that it had some surface rust. I'm gonna continue to very gently go across this logo. There's a couple of marks on here of rust that don't seem to wanna come off, so I'm gonna take my time. The combination of a Scotch-Brite pad and also a thousand grit sandpaper. And patience pays off. Look at that trim now. And now the hard part, removing this trim off the scale so I can transfer it to a new set of scales. This trim has been embedded in this celluloid for at least 50 years. So I'm gonna go a little radical with some lacquer thinner to try to melt away this celluloid and free up the trim. After about 15 minutes, with my fingernail, I gently started to pry under this end piece of trim, and sure enough, it came off like a rotten old toenail. Sorry for that visual. With that success, I moved on to the other piece of trim on the other side of the scales. That came off equally well. And now the hard part, this logo, which is a very intricate piece of brass, I'm gonna have to be super careful with this. After a good soaking in lacquer thinner, it was time to proceed. So using a very sharp X-Acto knife, I started to pry underneath this trim very carefully and slowly. And sure enough, the trim came off in one piece. And then all of the trim back in the lacquer thinner bath just to remove any remaining celluloid that might still be stuck on that brass. After that, it's just a matter of polishing up the trim and making it shine. The unpolished trim is on the left while the polished trim is on the right. You can really see the difference in shine. This classic razor represents a bygone era with only a small number of barbers still using them and those who just like the nostalgia. But the learning curve is steep and the possibilities for nicks and cuts are much greater than our modern shavers, like the shaving experience from Harry's. Whether you shave every day or just for special occasions like landing that new job, razors can be expensive, upwards of 35 bucks for an eight pack refill. That's a lot of money for poor quality razors. So six years ago, Harry's founders, Jeff and Andy, 
felt our pain. They raised money and bought their own factory in Germany and began selling great blades at a great price. Harry sent me their new starter set that includes a stylish weighted handle with a rubber grip, a five blade razor cartridge, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. The razor refills start at only two bucks and these German engineered blades are super sharp. Plus it's so convenient because they deliver them right to your door. I gotta tell you, the deal Harry's currently have on their trial set is amazing. You'll get everything you need for a close, comfortable shave, and you'll be supporting my channel by signing up. Redeem your trial set for just $3 when you go to harrys.com slash kipk. The trial set is a $13 value, so you're getting a really good deal. Upgrade your shaving experience by giving Harry's a try, and this special trial set is the deal to get you started. It's only three bucks, Go to harrys.com slash kipk to get started. Okay, now it's time to get onto this blade and get this thing shined up. It has some pitting. Uh, I'm going to start with sandpaper and see how well that goes. I start with a 220 grit sandpaper, which is pretty rough, and I will sand my way up as far as I can. Now there's some pitting on here and it's probably going to require a little bit of grinding action. So let's get to that. The grinding attachment on my Dremel will take some of that pitting away, but I don't want to lose a lot of blade because these blades are very thin. After a light grind, it's back to the sandpaper, and I'll continue to sand and work all the way up to 3,500 grit paper. And it's actually starting to get a pretty nice shine, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a good polish. And after that, I'll fine tune that edge with the leather strop. All right, it's time to make some brand new scales and these will be made out of wood. More specifically, the wood I chose is yellow heart. This is eighth inch thick and it'll be perfect for our new scales. So I'm going to use one of the original scales as a template and I'll lay that down on my yellow heart wood and using a pencil, I'll trace it out and then over to my saw where I'll cut it out. Hey, cut that out! And I'll repeat that process all over again for the other scale, leaving me with two nice brand new wood scales. But these scales need sanding, and the easiest way to do that is with my belt sander. So I'll take both scales and following the outline that I drew to try to get them as close as the original size, I'll sand them down. Now it's time to get two small clamps and clamp them together and continue to sand. This will give me two exact same size scales. Then there's one more small piece that needs to be traced and cut out, and that's the wedge. Now this separates the scales down towards the point end of the blade. I want my new scales to be similar to the original scales, and they had rounded edges all the way around on the top, so I will use my belt sander to accomplish that. Okay, it's time to drill our hole so we can get to finishing and assembly. I'll be using my drill press to drill a hole all the way at the end of our scales. This is at the point end of the blade. And I'll also drill the holes at the pivot point, which is at the other end of the scales, and also a hole for the stop about midway down the scales. Now I'm gonna take some large paper clips and I'm gonna bend them into shape a little bit and using a pair of needle nose pliers, I'm gonna bend them out and make four little stands. These will hold the scales during our finishing process. For a nice clear coat finish, I'm going to be using tongue oil. This is a high gloss oil and also a nice clean towel and I will apply tongue oil to each of the scales. I'll do the front, back, and sides, and then set them on the stands and let them dry for 24 hours. After they're dry, I will use steel wool as recommended to roughen up the surface, and then I'll repeat the tongue oil application process four more times. Okay, it's time for final assembly. There's a small plastic stop that prevents the blade from going all the way around through the scales, so using a nylon spacer, I'm gonna cut us a new one. 
Then micro fasteners will be used to assemble everything. Micro means small, as you can see here, a brass hex machine screw, washer, and nut. I'm going to assemble the wedge end of our scales, so I'll run a washer and screw through our trim, through the scales, through the trim on the other side, and then a washer and nut to button it up. It's looking pretty good. Then it's time for the nylon stop that we cut. We'll insert that in between the scales and then repeat the process with the micro fasteners, a washer and screw, and then washer and nut on the other side. Finally, let's get that blade in there and the pivot pin, which is now a micro fastener screw, will hold it in place, washer, screw, and then washer and nut on the other side to hold that blade down. Finally, the last piece of trim, the Carl Monkhouse original brass logo. I'll be using super glue to attach that to the scales. And it's done. Our straight razor has a nice gloss finish, the original trim, and now a very sharp blade. Even though I won't be using this straight razor, I had a great time restoring it. I hope you enjoyed this project, and if you'd like to see more of my restoration videos, click one of the boxes on the screen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.